Hello, world. Welcome to another episode of Golf Subpar. I am Colt Nose, joined as always the Sleazy Man. Sleazy, golf is back. Golf is back. Golf gambling is back, more importantly. It felt right, finally. First weekend in a long time where I had something to just completely sweat over on the weekend and yell at the TV and had a couple came down to the wire. So I feel back. I'm back alive again. I got some ways to win and or lose, mostly lose money on the weekend. It's it's a great week and obviously very special to me and one I always look forward to watching in, in an incredible field. All top five in the world are in the field once again. Yep. Um, star-studded event, so it's going to it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yep, and we will be doing our picking for that right after our interview coming up, which we'll get to right now. And legend, that word gets thrown around a little too much, but this dude, by uh, every sense of the word, is a legend. Mr. Jim McMahon, former quarterback for the 85 Bears. One of the teams that gets you know brought up in the conversation for best NFL team of all time, along with the 72 Dolphins. But this one was a, this was a really fun one, man. He was. Told some unbelievable NFL stories, some great golf stories, which happens with a lot of our – something happened to him that happened to a lot of our yeah, guests. Yeah, he, like. he stayed with the theme. It is, but he is an absolute beauty. Diehard golfer. All right, Sleaze, before we get to Jim McMahon, I know you have a special message from our official sponsor. Yes, this is as special as it gets, Colty. Anyone who's dealt with erectile dysfunction knows how awkward it can be to talk about in person. Luckily, there's a simple, convenient solution to get the treatment you need without ever leaving the couch. Our friends at Roman have spent years building a digital platform that can connect you with a doctor licensed in your state, all from the comfort of your home. Roman makes it convenient to get the treatment you need right from home. Just grab your phone or computer, complete a free online visit, and you'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. And if the doctor decides the treatment is right for you, your medication can be shipped right to your door with free two-day shipping. You also get free unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you have questions or want to adjust your treatment plan. With Roman, there are no commitments and you can cancel anytime. And I want to clear something up last week. I said last week that our producer Mark knows about this. That is false. Mark has no problems whatsoever. It's actually our video guy, Zach. Zach is the guy that uses Roman, and it has helped him immensely. Trust me, he raves about this stuff. So if you're struggling with ED, stay home. Go get Roman. Go to roman.com slash subpar for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's getroman.com slash subpar for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Go out there and get hard. All right. Well, let's get to Mr. Jim McMahon here on Golf Subpar. We are extremely fortunate to have two-time Super Bowl champion, Chicago sports icon, one of the toughest quarterbacks in the history of the NFL, Mr. Jim McMahon is in the house. How are we doing, Jim? Doing great, man. It's uh, finally getting out of the house a little bit. And, uh, it's good to be back into society. That's, that's very true, and we are very, very excited to be here. Like Drew said, absolute legend in the NFL, but it all started off at BYU for you, so... You, we had an unbelievable career there, but before you decided to go to BYU, was there anywhere else you were looking to go? Anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, I was. Uh, I went back to <laughs> Nebraska, Oklahoma State, a uh, few other big schools back in the day. But my my main focus when I was going to college was to play baseball. I, I really didn't. I, I loved the game of baseball. I still do. Uh, that's what I wanted to be was a baseball player, so. The only two schools that said I could play both sports was Nevada, Las Vegas, and, and BYU. And Vegas happened to be my last recruiting trip. And I came home from Vegas. I said, Pops, I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> I had such a good time, and, and uh, I was offered quite a bit of stuff. And he says, no, it's, it's not a big enough school. I said, Pops, listen to me. They just offered me a house, car, money, easy job at a casino. You know, I like could have been Steve Wynn. You know, who knows? Or dead from strippers, probably. But. Yeah. <clears throat> but he said no, and uh, that's how I ended up at BYU. Oh, my so. God. Sounds like SMU, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing some research. I, I knew you had a massive year that junior year. I didn't realize, like, the statistics that you had. You had 4,571 yards passing, 47 touchdowns. You set 32 NCAA records that year, and yet somehow finished fifth in Heisman voting. How in the shit, in this day and age, that's a runaway landslide Heisman victory. How in the shit do you finish fifth? In the Heisman voting that year, uh, like that—that's well, a BYU. You know, they don't get a lot of national press coverage. That's why. You know, we play our games in the in the evenings or Saturday Saturday night, and so they don't get any press coverage back in New York usually. Uh, but yeah, I was the first guy to throw for over four thousand yards, um, and I missed. If you add up the time that I played, I missed about three games. Okay. So my next question had I had I played those three games, I would have been well over five thousand yards and, and over fifty touchdowns. So, but um, 
Yeah, I didn't didn't get a whole lot of luck. But your numbers were incredible. Overall, you had 70 NCAA records at BYU. You still have two, actually, at BYU, by the way, if you didn't know really? that. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. But you went on to be drafted fifth overall by the Chicago Bears. So you're going to you're going to a program with Mike Ditka, who's obviously defense first, run the ball first, and you're a guy that likes to air it out. Was that something you're kind of like, uh, I don't know how this is going to work? Or was it just like, hey, let's see if I can change his mind and start throwing the ball a little more? Well, I was very surprised to end up in Chicago to begin with because all indications were that I was going to the Baltimore Colts. They were drafting right before the Bears. <clears throat> and I'd been – I'd done all the uh, – what do they call them? The workouts and all that kind of stuff. I had dinner or dinner with Johnny Unitas at his restaurant in Baltimore. He was telling me how I was going to enjoy the city and this and that. But um, at the time, my agent also had – um, a running back from Baltimore. I think it was Curtis Dickey. If that name rings, okay. sounds familiar. And they were having trouble signing Curtis. So my agent told him, don't even bother drafting me because you'll never sign me. And so and on draft day, I was like, wow, Baltimore passed. Yeah, I didn't even know who was picking next. And then it was Chicago. And so that's that's how I ended up there. Well, you're you're one of the you're obviously playing for one of the greatest football teams ever, the 85 Bears. What was it like in Chicago during those times, being obviously the quarterback for the Bears, walking around the great city of Chicago? I mean, you had to be just an absolute rock star around there. Yeah, the city always treated me well. I, I enjoyed it. I lived there for 28 years. All my kids were, were born and raised there. Uh, great city, great fans, uh, very knowledgeable fans. You know, they <clears throat> you don't have to win there. That's what's great about it. <laughs> you know, if you play hard, they'll love you. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they know who plays hard and who doesn't. But uh, but if you play hard and win, hell, they'll love you forever. And that's, you know, it's, it's been 35 years and they're still, they're still talking about us. So, well, speak, like you did play hard and you had a, you, you, because of the way you played, you had some injuries throughout your NFL career. What do you think of the new rules in the NFL where like everything is designed around protecting the quarterback? Quarterback can't get hit. I mean, anything below the knee, it's a penalty. Anything up high, that's a penalty. You can it's only hit joke. him basically right here. What do you think of that? It's a joke. It's. I'd hate to be a defensive player. I mean, where do you hit anybody at nowadays? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 changed quite a bit because back then they could take two, sometimes three steps, and still drill you after you've released the ball. And uh, yeah, you always had to have your head on a swivel, or or like Charles Martin did, and just wait yeah. about three minutes, wait about and four or five minutes, ground. and then yeah. just body slam. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty interesting there. In fact, that was the start of all my problems with my head now because when he slammed me the first thing to hit the ground was the top of my head and so it compressed my uh, c1 and 2 it actually twisted them in the op opposite direction so i'm having trouble with my spinal fluid flowing properly uh, from that and also i had a broken neck at some point in my career and I, I, I pretty much know when it happened but um so that's another blockage area. See, uh, six and seven are cracked and compressed. Was that hit the Charles Martin? Was that the one that did it, or was it? A no, that time? that was that's what did the C one and two twisted those. <laughs> but I remember uh, I was playing for the Vikings, playing in New York in the playoffs, and my legs went numb twice during the game. So I figured it was during that game. Oh my! God. And no one ever, no team, the Vikings never like diagnosed said, "Hey Jim, uh, I think you have a broken neck." No. We didn't uh, – well, we lost the game, so the season is over, right? So all you do, you get back home, go in the facilities, you know, talk to the coach. I said, hey, you, you, you feeling okay? I said, well, I guess. So I went home, never never worried about it. Uh, I didn't re realize I, I had a broken neck until I was doing the workman's comp probably 10, 12 years ago. They did all the x-rays and everything, and they said, oh, when would you break your neck? <laughs> I said, oh, I didn't know I had a broken neck. Never. Wow. And I said, I kind of, I, I know when it happened because my legs went numb, but so I'm, I'm pretty lucky just to be still upright. How do you think your, if, if at all, how do you think your NFL career plays out differently? If you played under the modern rules right now with the, the non-hitting of the quarterback being allowed? Well, I'd still get hit because I'd take off. Yeah. You, you were a head first guy. I wasn't, uh, I saw an opening. I took off. Yeah. I'd much rather throw the ball for sure, but, uh, I didn't uh, waste any opportunities if I could take off and run. But it's easier now for quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. I would, yeah. I would love to play now. I mean, it was – that's all we did in college. You get to throw it pretty much every down. 
That's what I love about Andy Reid, you know, what they're doing in Kansas yeah. City. You got to love old offensive linemen that love to throw the football. Andy was my tackle in college. So I've, I've known him forever. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that either. I didn't know yeah, that. He was at BYU. No, he's yeah. doing okay now. He's yeah. doing great yeah. now. Yeah. Finally. He's designed he's the offense. He's been a great coach built. for years, and now to finally get a Super Bowl. Was I didn't know that. Happen. So I was going to ask, cool stuff. if you could pick one one coach to play for, obviously Dick was a run the ball in defense, would, would Andy Reid maybe be the guy? Oh, yeah. I definitely. What about back him. in your era? Who who was a coach that you would have uh, liked to played for? Well, I got to play for Mike Holmgren. I thought he was. I played for seven coaches, and I thought Holmgren was the best of all those of those teams. Uh, I played for Belichick in Cleveland in '95. I don't have any respect for him. He's a. How come? He's a lying piece of shit for one. Um, when I was there, at the end of training camp, they call. He calls me in. He says, "Look." We have to release you because we got so many guys hurt. We need roster spots. He goes, but I really need you here. I said, what are you talking about? You know, all they had was Testaverde, and they had just drafted a rookie. He goes, he goes, if Vinny gets hurt, I, I need you. I said, well, look, Bill. I said, if I'm going to be here, I have to move my family. I have to find a hockey team for my sons. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I got to do. And he goes, no, we're going to take care of you. I said, well, what do you mean take care of me? He said, we're going to pay you to sit out. So I'm like, I called my attorney. I said, can I trust this guy? He just said, they're going to pay me to sit out. He says, probably only going to be one or two weeks. So my attorney said, you know, take him at his word. So I ended up, I found a house, moved my family, found a hockey team for my sons. And then uh, the first week goes by, I called in on Friday for my check. And they gave me the runaround, right? So I'm thinking, all right, first, first week, jitters, whatever. So the second week, I call again on Friday. They give me the runaround again. Seven weeks, I'm doing nothing in Cleveland, working out at the local Gold's Gym, playing a lot of Firestone. That was nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, seven weeks I did nothing. And I'm like, why the hell did I trust this guy? And they finally signed me back. So I addressed the next three games. So eight, nine, and ten, I, I dress, I get my checks. So they still owe me seven checks. <clears throat> so we're playing, we happened to be playing the Packers on week 10. And Andy Reid was on the staff at the time. So he's in his Packer gear. I'm in my Cleveland Brown stuff. And we're playing catch on the 50 yard line pregame. And he said, Oh, you should have came here this year, Mac. We got a good squad. I said, I know, man. I, I messed up because I hate it here. I hate that little prick over there. I was pointing at Belichick. <laughs> and uh, he goes, What's going on? I said, just, I said, just don't be. I said, Check the waiver wire in the next couple of weeks. You might be surprised. So the very next day, I'm in the QB meeting. We're watching the game film. I get up to go to the restroom. And here comes the little GM that was giving me the runaround the last 10 weeks, right? I corner him. I said, look, Mike, I, I need the money. I said, my wife just got in a wreck. I don't want to deal with the insurance. I said, I need my cash. And he looks at me like smart ass. And he goes, well, maybe we'll pay you. Maybe we won't. Ooh. And I snapped on him. I just grabbed him by his throat and I started banging his head on the wall. I go, you little bastard, you're going to pay me my money. And then I realized what I was doing, right? And I said, oh, I looked around. There was no, you know, no cameras yeah, anywhere. Yeah. So I whacked his ass again. <laughs> <laughs> and he slides down the wall. I walk right into the training room, called my attorney. I said, you better get me cut right now. I'm going to kill this guy. He goes, what happened? I said, get me cut right now. So he called me back within two minutes. He said, okay, they'll release you if that's what you want. I said, perfect. So now I, I walk back into the QB meeting. All this happened within 10 minutes. And I just said, hey, boys, I'll see you all later. And they look at me, what? Where, where are you going? And the QB coach says, hey, have you talked to Bill? And I said, you can tell Bill to kiss my ass, that lying piece of shit. I'm out of here. So I, I was gone. The next day I was in uh, Green Bay. Yeah. Uh, finished the year with them. We ended up losing the NFC Championship game that year. I came back for one more year, and <clears throat> we ended up winning it. So that was my uh, wow. Deal with that's holy incredible. shit! I did yeah. not know that story. Have you talked to Bill Belichick since that ever? You wouldn't want to. Would if you ran into him in the street? Would you say anything to him? No. That's wild, dude. I but he did geez. that. They did a lot of deals like that under the table because of the salary cap and stuff. And a lot of guys got hosed because wow. they trusted him. So no, I'm guessing you never got your money. Nope. Well. I, I've heard from a, a, a good source you had a little run-in with another coach when you were in Philly. And so I was told to ask the story about you and Coach Rick Kotite and a fire extinguisher. Hmm. 
Oh, I don't know. Can you tell that story? I don't remember the fire extinguisher. <laughs> allegedly. Well, I, remember, Roy Green I, re says allegedly. I remember we used to, uh, during camp, we used to, when we knew the coaches were gone. And uh, I had I had a master key to the whole dorm, so I, I'd go in and out. Anybody's room that I wanted. So I, I, I visited <laughs> Richie's. I visited Richie's room a couple of nights and left it in disarray. <laughs> well, the story Roy yeah, Green told here? me was you got a fire extinguisher and just sprayed his entire room, his clothes and everything. And he walks in, all of a sudden they hear the coach go, what the fuck just happened in here? <laughs> and you just dusted it with a fire extinguisher, the whole thing. I don't know. I probably did. That was your boy, Roy Green. I, I did. I did mess it up. Plead the fifth times. right now. I love that. That but is fantastic. Richie, wait, I remember that because Richie came to my room the next next morning. And he walks in, he goes, you stayed a f out of my room. <laughs> I said, okay, coach. I didn't, didn't know it was yours. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> oh, my I God. That is so good. Uh, we got we got to go back to the 85 Bears because there's so many great personalities that were on that team. You, you got Refrigerator, you know, Perry. You got uh, Walter Payton. Steve McMichael, who's a guy that was awesome, revered in that town. And from what I've read, you've all, you guys all like to party together. What was that like team camaraderie like? Because I, I wanted to tell a story. I've been told that you guys would used to used to play on Sundays, win, go out the next night, and they had a, Dick would say, "Hey, you got to be in on Monday for film or whatever it was." And you guys would go so hard that you would just drive to the facility and sleep in your cars or sleep in the facility because you're like, "There's no way I'm waking up tomorrow." True or not? That happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> More than once. Is that cool? Like that's unique. I feel like nowadays, like that probably doesn't happen. But the, how close you guys were? Uh, I mean, every team. I used to go out with our offensive lineman every Thursday night, and we'd pick that night to go out and have dinner. And whose ever turn it was to buy, they they would pick the restaurant, and they you know we'd all after practice we'd show up, and it started out it was just me and my lineman, and by the end of the year it was we had running backs, we had <laughs> receivers, we had some defensive guys come because they'd heard how much fun we were having on Thursday nights. And I think Dick had caught one of it, too. Cause Fridays became our live scrimmage days, uh. goal line and short yardage day. And everything, all our practices were live. We had, always had pads on, and we were, we we're hitting for, for three straight hours. And it would take it take that long to get through practice because there was always fights. And uh, defensive guys would be yelling to Buddy, hey, Buddy, they're cutting us. And Buddy would say, well, do they cut you in the game? Yeah, deal with it. <laughs> that was the mentality. And he didn't want to give up anything on his defense. And Dick had wanted to, you know, Dick would yell, hey, do this, do this. And he's like, no. Nope. It, was, it was a very strange dynamic because basically we had two head coaches. You know, defensive coach was their head coach, and, and Dick was our head coach. And uh, there was fights all the time. It was crazy. I mean, we won in spite of them, not because of them. I think we had great. we had we had great players. We had uh, we were a young football team. Uh, that defense was um, it was new to around the league. They couldn't figure out how to block the forty six, and and with the guys plugged into that defense, it was mayhem at some time. I mean, they couldn't they couldn't block these guys. So it was um, it was fun though. We had a, I was there for seven years. I had a blast. Great, yeah. great teammates. The city, the city's awesome. Well, now it's, I think they're letting it go to waste right yeah. now. It's, but uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a great town. It's just unfortunate what's going on right now. And the only game y'all lost that year was at Miami, which not only in the NFL but you see it in the NBA too. A lot of great teams go into the city of Miami on the road and lose. And a lot of the buzz around is like because of the nightlife in Miami, right? There's a lot of things to do down there. Pretty fun little town. You guys lost the only game at Miami. Great, great Miami team, by the way. But did that ha did that loss have anything to do with? Hey, there's a lot of stuff to do. Miami, not that bad of a place to hang out on a on a Saturday night. No, I think. Well, they were. <clears throat> they had the offense that could, you know, exploit our defense. You know, they they got you know Danny got rid of the ball quickly. Uh, I was told the night before the game I wasn't playing. I practiced all week. Well, I missed Wednesday's practice. Because I had sprained my ankle the week before. I missed one day of practice. I practiced Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We got on a plane Sunday. So we're doing our little walk through Sunday night in the stadium. And he tells me, oh, you're not playing tomorrow night. And I'm like, what? Why? He goes, oh, you missed Wednesday's practice. 
So I'm thinking like you. I'm thinking, hey, Miami could have some fun. Could be worse. I'm not have to play. I said, okay, Cleveland. fine, cool. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. So I, I, I had a good time. And then um, during the game, earlier in the year, we played Minnesota up in in Minnesota. On, it's a Thursday night game, right? And another one. I was in traction a couple of days in the hospital. He said I wasn't gonna play, and I, I chewed his ear off to get in the game. And then, so this time he says, he says, you're not playing. He said, you're, we're not going to have another uh, Minnesota night. And I'm like, why not? That worked out pretty damn yeah, good. I remember that? Yeah. So I, I just said, you know what the hell with you? Fine. I'm not going to play. So I, I was, wasn't into the game at all. The only thing I was worried about was Walter Payton was going for his 10th or 11th hundred yard game in a row, which is going to be a, an NFL record. So I was just trying to keep track of his yards. Right. And we got down early, you know, just a couple touchdowns early. So Dick could panic and start throwing the ball. We don't have a throwing offense, right? I said, hey, you got to give the ball to Walter because they had the worst rush defense in the league that year. He could have probably ran three, three or 400 yards if they gave him the football. So about six minutes to go in the game, we're down 14 points, and he decides to put me in. You know, in, my, in Minnesota, I was right in his ear the whole time. This time I was like as far away as I could get from him. <laughs> And he, he walks me down. He goes, all right, you're in. And I thought, oh, you told me I wasn't playing. He goes, get your ass in the game, right? <laughs> so he sends me in with a pass play. And I, I'd figured at the time Walter had about 70, 75 yards rushing. So I come in the huddle. I said, look, boys. I said, this game doesn't mean shit. I said, we're already in the playoffs. We have home field advantage. I said, we're down 14 points. Who cares if we lose this game? I said, let's get this guy the record he deserves. And they all went, cool. Wow. So as I'm getting up to the ball, Dickon knows I didn't call the pass. I looked over at him. And he's, you know, he's, <laughs> he's MFing me up and yeah. down the sideline. And at, at this time, you know, they're dropping eight guys and rushing three. So he, he bust up there for probably 15 yards. I didn't realize we had a timeout left. So he burns the timeout. I got to go talk to him now. And he's just screaming up, <laughs> up and down. And I said, hey, look, nothing in our offense gets us that many yards, our pass offense, right? I said, look, they're dropping eight guys. I said, now Walter only needs probably 10 yards for his record. And he had no clue what I was talking about because he was so pissed off at me. And it finally clicked in. He goes, oh, yeah, 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 we're going to get him his record, but first we're going to do this. Gives me another pass. So I get in the huddle, I said, boys, this shit's really going to hit the fan now, but we're going to run this some bitch again. <laughs> and they went, yeah, they're all laughing as yeah. we go up the line of scrimmage. I looked over at Mike again, and he's, he throws his clipboard. Now he tries to throw his headset yeah, the at headset. me. It was stuck to his side, so it just kind of bounced <laughs> yeah. back and whacked him. I gave it to Wally. He busted up there for another 10 or 15. I said, all right, now let's try to win a game. But That is hilarious. How was that talk after the game? I mean, he obviously got he got the record. Yeah, he did get his record. What, what he was appreciative of that. afterwards. And he didn't say much to me. No. no. What a quarterback though. It'd be like, yeah. hey, who gives a shit? We got home field advantage. Let's get our boy the record right now. That's really That's how cool. it should be, yeah. And is it true the Super Bowl shuffle got a ton of publicity, still does to this day. Was that recorded? I've read that was recorded the day after that game at Miami. True? Yeah. Whose idea was that? Uh, it was yeah, Willie, Willie Galt had a friend in the music business, and um, they they came to us. You know, it was like right after, uh, or right during Halloween or Thanksgiving, and they said, "Look, we want to make a record." They, this is how they came to us: we're going to make a record, and the proceeds are going to go to feed the homeless for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we said, "Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea." So they got four or five of us to to go to a studio and do our part. About a week or two later, they came back and said, all right, now you guys got to do a video. And we're like, no, I'm not doing a video. I said, you told us we we're going to do a record. We did the record. We're done. He said, no, no, you got you to do a video. Everybody does a video now. And I said, well, I'm, I'm not doing it. And, uh, and then they, we find out they're going to tape it the next morning after we get back from Miami. We got back probably 3 or 4 in the morning from Miami. And these guys had to be at the studio like at 8 or 9. And they were there for, I think, eight hours, nine hours. Oh, my God. And I'm like, Walter and I didn't go. And so probably three or four days later, uh, Willie came to us at practice, and he says, hey, man, uh, 
you guys don't do your part, we're gonna have to sue you. So we're, we're like, what? are you kidding me? I guess the, the small print, it said something. I don't oh. Know. Oh, and shit. so what you see there is, is uh, Walter and I did our parts after practice one day in the racquetball court at Hallis Hall. They just green screen or blue screen, what do they do? So what you saw was one pissed off white man doing whatever the hell I was doing. <laughs> Did you- that's, I had no idea about That's that. Incredible. How can you get sued yeah. for some shit you just do voluntarily? Contract I don't know, but maybe legals are weird. Yeah. Did you write your? Did each player write their own lyric, or was that written for you guys? Like, did you write your verse? No, that were, it was written. I mean, it was. I think I changed a few things, but it was. I figured this about as far as I'm going to go with this. Do you still remember your lyrics? Some of them. You don't got to say them. No. I'm if you unless you want to. No. <laughs> I didn't want to do it then. I didn't get to do it now. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my god! How much shit does that team get for recording the Super Bowl Shuffle if they don't? If you guys don't end up winning the Super Bowl by a million, like you did? Ah, oh, we'd look kind of foolish. Yeah, I'd have... I mean, that's how confident you are, though, that you go record yeah, had, something like that. I mean, we we had a good shot to win in '84 as well. Yeah, and you know, we had a good football team. We were, I think, we were seven and two. When I got hurt, I, I uh, tore the bottom part of my kidney off in a game, and uh, we ended up finish, we finished ten and six that year, and went to the NFC Championship game, uh, lost to the Niners. So we we knew we we knew we had a good football team. So coming into '85, that was our goal. We said, you know, we ain't, we're not losing, or we're not, we're going to get to the Super Bowl and win it, and we did. Uh, and then you know the following year, we come in. We finished 14 and two. We had the best record in the league. Uh, had home field advantage again throughout the playoffs, and we lose at home first round. And then the year after that, 87, same thing. We had the home field advantage. We lose in the first round at home. Mm. Then 1988, we ended up losing the NFC Championship game at home. So it was, we didn't really have a home field advantage. It seemed like, you know, we I, I guess we thought when. Guys would come in there in January and it's yeah. 30, 40 below zero. They'd fold up, but they didn't fold they up. They didn't fold up. Yeah. Well, at the end of your career, you go to Green Bay and you back up Brett Favre and you win another Super Bowl in New Orleans. What was it like being around Brett Favre? Obviously, he was probably the most dominant quarterback in the game at that time. Uh, what, what was it like backing him up? Yeah, Favre, he was fun. I mean, Brett's a tough kid, man, loves to play the game. You know, you still see him on the commercials out there on the field throwing the ball, so. No, he was a lot of fun to be around. He was a tough kid, like I said, and just just loved to play. Did you see any of you in him? Uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah. He was y'all both like he, to run around was, and yeah, sling he it. Was, and he was he was tough. He was stubborn. He, you know, so it, it would happen pretty much every week. He would just do something and just he'd hit the free safety in the chest with the ball for for no reason. And Holmgren would always look at me and go, "Why do you do that?" Like, <laughs> Shit, dude! I've only been here for a year. You've been here for four with him. But uh, yeah, he was a lot of fun to play with. That 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 was a good football team as well. We got I got to play with Reggie White again, who I played with in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, it was good to see him finally get a Super Bowl ring. He deserved one. He was a hell of a player. Did you teach Brett Favre the? Co- uh, there's a story like you taught Brett Favre the cover two, like where the cover two is. Like he like they were in tape, and he's like, "What's a cover two? Yeah, like, I don't know what. Sometimes I, I would do the same thing, Holmgren. I said, "Why would he do that?" You know, he'd come off the field, and I go, I go, what was that all about? And he goes, well, the strong safety came up. I said, well, where'd the weak safety go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I go, you just hit him in the chest. <laughs> I mean, just because somebody comes up, they, they they try not to leave the middle of the field open, you know, because that's you give the, a receiver that money that much room, you can't cover those guys. Yeah, but that would happen, you know, once yeah. once, a, once a week or once Take a game. Take the good with the bad. Yeah. That's funny. Do you get back to Chicago ever? Yeah, I'm back there quite a bit. Uh, probably three, four, five times a year. What's it like when you're back there? Are you revered? I mean, you are one of the iconic Chicago athletes of all time, like most liked, you know. I still have a lot of great friends there. Uh, I, I haven't bought a beer there for quite a while. So. <laughs> yeah. It's a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. I love you know I love free stuff, especially beer. <laughs> free beer is good beer. Free Ooh, beer is the is best true. beer. That's true. But since this is a golf show, we should talk a little bit about your golf game. Yeah, First off, a little golf. How did you How did you get into the game? How did you even pick up the game, pick the game of golf up? Actually, I started. Uh, I think it was my last year in college. 
uh, over the summer, BYU got me a job at a, at a farm. And I'd, I'd never been on a farm before. So the first day I go to work and the, uh, I guess the farmer, the guy who owned the place, I don't know. He says, okay, uh, go in there and clean out the barn. And I looked around, I go, which one's the barn? Because everything was red, right? I don't know which one, where the barn is. It was right there. I said, okay. I walked in there and it was a dead, it was a goat or a sheep or something. It was dead. They had to slit his throat for whatever they did. And I come running out. I said, hey, dude, there's a, there's a dead animal in there. He was, I know. We killed it last night. It was giving birth. We had to get rid of it. I said, well, I'm not touching that damn thing. He goes, oh, you don't want to do that? I said, no. He goes, come with me. He gives me a post hole digger. And I start digging holes. And I dug about two holes. And I said, looked at him. I said, hey, dude, this farm is stuff ate for me. I left. Never went back. And so my, my roommate was working at a golf course. He grew up playing golf and lo loves the game. So I would say, hey, I'll come see you today at, at the golf course. And I would just play. It was a little nine-hole track. It was right across the street from the Osmond Studios in Provo, Utah. And I would just play all day long, just up and down this golf course. That's how I got started in it and just kept going and, and uh, just loved the game. I actually took that guy to Augusta one year. He's the guy that taught me to play. So, That's awesome. And we went over to Ireland and Scotland together too. So. Yeah, he still comes around. He's out here quite a bit. We get to play. So it's it's been fun. And you're known for playing without shoes on. That's like your big thing, right? Everybody knows you do that. And that makes sense to me because you play a ton of celebrity events. You're all over the country. And that makes sense in like Tahoe. You hit it in the rough. Cool. You walk over there and you hit your ball out of the rough. The trees or you're in the other hole. Well, what happens in Arizona? Because this is desert. You miss, the, you miss the fairway in Arizona, you're in the desert. There's cactus to What are you, are you going in there and hitting your ball in the no, desert? No, I keep my flip-flops available. That's oh, what okay. I, that makes sense. If I got to hit a okay. shot in that, I'll go. I'll put these on for one. And then, okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't find, uh, I never like shoes. You know, my, I don't know if you see my ankle. My This ankle's been busted a few times, and my feet, they don't fit in shoes really good. And my right foot is probably half a size to a size smaller than my left one. So I can't get shoes to fit, and I just I'd rather be barefoot anyway. Yeah, and the it just bottom of your feels feet good. Be like I, you know, golf's about balance, right? Yeah. It's not about gripping in and digging in with your feet. It's about balance, and I've always felt better with uh, without them. So if you're in the desert, flip flops are available to oh, get yeah. in there. Because yeah. the cart pass get a little hot. You know, you step out of your yeah, cart. Yeah, it's hotter than shit out there. Yeah, too. My, it sounds like bacon frying sometimes when I get out there. But That's my great. feet starts bubbling. Well, you've played 30 times at the American Century Celebrity Tournament up in Tahoe, one of the great events of the year. You have any good stories from playing in there? And I mean, I'm sure you have tons. I don't know how many you can does tell. Does Jim have good stories? We would love to hear some Lake Tahoe stories. Uh, who, who watches the podcast? A bunch of men. <laughs> Nobody. <dude. laughs> okay, good. It's fine. Nobody's listening. Oh, after, th yeah, 30 years, it's, I've done pretty much everything up there. But uh, a couple stories that stand out. I was playing, uh, I think it was my 10th year there. And the guy we were just talking about, he was caddying for me at the time. He said, look, let's, let's try something different this year. Let's uh, maybe get a little sleep. Maybe get up and hit some balls, have some breakfast, and don't drink. I said, okay, well, you know, 10th year, we'll try something different. So I get up, I get eight hours sleep, get up, eat breakfast. <clears throat> go out into the range, hit balls. I never hit ball. I hate hitting balls. I hit balls. I go out there, I fire a smooth 88. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I told him, I said, dude, now we do it my way. And the rest of the day, we stayed up hammering drinks. I probably got two or three hours sleep. I get to the course. He goes, you're going to hit balls? I said, no. You're going to eat? I look over in, in the tent there. I see a guy drinking a Bloody Mary. I said, hey, is, is that any good? He goes, oh, it's a double. It's great. And I tasted it. I went, wow, that is good. He goes, I'll bring you some out on the course. He brings me 11 doubles on the course that day. <laughs> Just 11. And so it's normal. I don't remember him doing it, but I guess my caddy took my drink away on 16 because I was walking down the fairway. Like, <laughs> but we get to the 18th hole, or our 18th hole was number nine because we, we played so well, we had to start on the back. <laughs> So on number nine in Tahoe, the old number nine, 
you know, it's just a little tee box area, and then you got some fans here, and then there's there's really nowhere to go, right? So I'm sitting there, I'm wait, I'm playing with Vinny Del Negro, local guy here, mm -hmm. and um, William Devane, the actor. And so Vinny's Vinny's over his ball and he's waggling, and it, I mean, it got to be worse than Sergio at sometimes. It was just like, whoa, is he ever gonna swing? Is ever... And I'm sitting there going. <laughs> Oh, oh no! I know that feeling. Yeah, so I I start inching my way towards the back of the tee, right? I'm getting away from everybody as I get as far away as I can. I'm probably 10, 15 yards from where he's and he's still waggling, and I just go <laughs> and I just jet puke, <laughs> jet puke, jet puke. That's I that's turn around that. and everybody's still watching Vinny waggle. They didn't even hear it. It was such a good hurl. So then I gave him another one. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Vinny finally hits his ball. Now we're walking up the fairway. I catch up and I say, hey, dude, I'm sorry. He goes, what? I said, I was just back there hurling. I didn't know if you heard me or not. <laughs> he goes, no, you're fine. I said, okay, cool. I double bogeyed that hole to shoot 72. Wow. That's it. And my, yep. my buddy says, I don't know how the hell you do it, but it works. He goes, we're drinking again tomorrow. I said, yeah. you're damn right. We yeah, every day. Yeah. <laughs> that is like awesome. Like 10 cups. Who are the guys you like to hang out with in Tahoe? Like, to have a good time up there. Who are you, who's your Who's your group? Oh boy! Well, Jr. is one for sure. Yep. I usually see him in the high roller room. Uh, lately, I've been taking an RV up there and just camping it out. That, yeah, camping out behind the um, actually where they have the the outdoor concerts. And a couple of years, they actually fenced us in. It was uh, David Wells, myself, Brett Saber, Hagen. Uh, there was a couple of other RBs that we kind of have our own little camp in there. And so every time, every time we get done playing, we end up sitting out at the RV most of the night. Some guys go and gamble and stuff like that, but I'm not a big gambler. So I just sit out there and just have a good time. That's it works. Awesome. Double the last shoot 72. Is that the most fun celebrity event? You play tons. You play like 20 something celebrity oh, events yeah. typically. I, is I that the best one? I was going to tell you another Tahoe story. This is one everybody yeah. wants me to tell all the time. Love since it. there's a bunch of dudes watching this, yeah, it's all I dudes. think they'll appreciate it. So we're playing. It's Sunday afternoon, and I usually get there on Monday, right? I play the I play the pro am on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I play six straight days. <clears throat> and for some reason, I had white pants on for the day. Okay. So we're on sixteen. I'm waiting to hit my second shot. It's a par five. So, and I got to, I got to pee really bad. So I, I go to the right side of the fairway behind a big redwood tree and I'm just, I'm halfway through just going, Oh man, it's been a hell of a week. <sighs> Can't wait to get over with. And all of a sudden there, something went, bloop. I went Oh God. <laughs> and I looked down and it was like, you gotta be kidding me. It was like, you opened the beer tap for a second. Just beer just shot out of my ass. <laughs> and my son is caddying for me. So I'm, I, I get him right down to the ankles right away. And I, I lean around the tree and I go, hey, Sean, bring me the towel, buddy. He's like, what, Dad? I said, bring me the towel, son. Hurry up. He's like, Dad, why? I said, bring me the fucking towel right now. <laughs> so, so now I was playing with Joe Sackick, the hockey guy, yeah, and yeah. Marshall Falk, right? And all they could see is like my bare ass from the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> They're laying down there laughing. So I, you know, Sean comes around the tree. He's like, oh, that's nasty. I said, yeah, I know. I tried to freshen up. And literally, it's just <laughs> like, it's like a two inch streak all the way down to my ankle, right? And it was one of those beer farts. Uh, it's nasty. So anyway, I hadn't made a double bogey in three days, right? So I got my second shot. I dead shank it. <laughs> End up making double on 16. So I'm like, I was pissed anyway. So now they got Jimmy Roberts on the tee box at NBC on, the, on 17, right? Yeah, of course. So I'm, I just, I'm walking across the tee box. He goes, hey, Mac, how you playing? He sticks it back in my face. I didn't even slow down. I just turned and went, I was good till I just shit my pants back there. <laughs> <laughs> they had that to is, go to commercial. They were laughing so hard. That is fantastic. I walked right over to the lake. I pushed two boats apart. And these people on the boat going, what are you doing? I'm sitting in the water like this, just trying to. I said, just trying to freshen up a little bit. <laughs> oh, uh, of course you were. I finished. Yeah. I finished yeah. par par, which was good for me. But uh, 
My daughter was taking pictures. She showed everybody in the clubhouse. Oh, look at my dad. Just shit his pants. Here's my dad. He just shit his pants. But it wasn't like I was trying to, you know, squeeze a fart around that turd or anything. It just went (laughs) bloop. (laughs) I love the description. Yes. Only Uh, on the day you were wearing white pants, too. Yep. Of course. Have you worn white pants? Could have been been wearing some black slacks. No white pants. If I do, I have to have underwear. I usually don't wear underwear. So that was was another fun fact about Jim McMahon. Yeah, you got to stay free. No shoes, no underwear. Yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love these. That's well, yeah. so good. Yeah, that get you fantastic. another one. Fantastic. Get you another. Well, Slee, should we get to the emergency nine? Yeah, let's go E9 on him. <laughs> so we do this with every guest, Jim. Fun nine fun questions. Just get to know you a little better, which we got to know you oh, very well. You just know me pretty, I know good, pretty right damn well at this point. That is true. Well, start us <laughs> off, Slee. We ask this question to everybody. Yeah, squeeze. All right. When was the last time you had to try to squeeze a fart around a <laughs> shit? No, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, man. all right, I'm kidding. All right, this is a question we ask everybody, but there's a movie being made on the life of Jim McMahon. Who do you want to play you? Which actor? Yeah, I could do. I could play myself. You could play you. Yeah. All right. I've done this. I've done TV. Who would you have in mind? I had Val Kilmer, but young Val Kilmer, like Iceman Val Kilmer. Oh yeah. He's a he's a good looking dude. Had a bunch of swag, just like you. I couldn't that. come up with anything. I came up with the young John said, Malkovich. I would have said my um. Matthew McConaughey, maybe. Oh, I like that. Good looking cat. You got to have a good looking dude with some juice, you know? All right. That makes sense. All right. That's our first one. Yeah. So you had a couple of nicknames back in the day when you wore the visor. Darth Vader, Black Sunshine. Which one you like better? (laughs) Probably Darth Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Scary. I don't know. I kind of like that black. Black sunshine. sunshine. Well, black sun. Well, I'll probably get in trouble for that now. Yeah, you can't say that anymore. That's fair. (laughs) But <laughs> number visor. three before we get in trouble no, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah we're not a political podcast all right here we go name the one current quarterback you've seen that most reminds you of yourself hmm. Mahomes mm, that's a good one MVP Super Bowl champ because uh, I think he's uh he's very bright for one but he's he throws the ball from all different angles I mean he's very athletic and um uh, yeah I, w- I would pick him yeah, I like how that. good is. I it? used to be athletic till I got yeah. too many Shit. knee surgeries like and shoulder could, surgeries. And... You still look like you could whoop some ass right now. You think Mahomes will go down as one of the best to ever play? Uh, well, the way things are going, yeah, um, he's going to have to, you know, win a few more Super Bowls. It's tough. It's going to be tough to catch up to Brady, but uh, he's he's a hell of a player. He, he, if he stays healthy, I mean, what amazed me is was it a year or two ago when his knee. Cap popped oh, it off. Oh, like sideways. Uh, it was against and he Denver. was able to come back. And I'm just like, I was so he's got some, he's got some toughness to him too. So I like him. Came back quick. All yep. right, all right. I like Number that. four, you played with some huge names in Chicago. We mentioned them earlier: the Fridge, Walter Payton, Richard Dent, Singletary. You're known as a big partier. Of that, say the '85 Bears team, who could keep up with Jim McMahon off the field? Steve McMichael for sure. Yeah, Mongo. Mm. Oh yeah. He is a bad. He, he's, he's a bad man. He's still going. He's still he's, going. Yeah. That's awesome. How do you well, Meg's great. I, 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 do you know? uh, it came from the uh, the movie Blazing Saddles. Mm. Remember? Did you ever see Blazing Saddles? I Probably seen not. Jim, I'm sorry to say that. I'm dating but, myself uh, right now. But Alex Karras was the next defensive uh, lineman from the Detroit Lions, and he he played the character Mongo. And you, you'll have to check that movie out. Classic. Mongo. Good nickname. Y'all had some good nick. You had Fridge. You had Sweetness. Sweetness yeah. You got Darth Vader or Black Lightning. Black which Sunshine. Freaking Black Sunshine. Black Sorry. Sunshine. Sun- Mongo. You had some. That's an all nickname team right there. All right. That's a good one. All right. Give me one. One rumor you've heard about yourself that is not true. That I called all the women of New Orleans sluts. Yeah, oh, yeah, I read, I read that. that. Back, yeah, in the, that. back in the day, I almost got killed over that. That's I mean, a was, problem nowadays. So that was not a uh, Super Bowl that I, I really don't remember the game much. because all, 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 all I was thinking of was I'm going to get shot. I, I was getting death threats all week. And uh, wow. you know, guys that, guys didn't want to stand by me at practice because we, we practiced at the old New Orleans Saints facility, which was literally an apartment complex overlooked the field. And so none of, nobody would stand by I me. Mean, I had to wear a different number. Uh, Why would that even come out? Like, how does that even? That's a, that's a, I a don't know. Reporter like made that up and re, he and made like, it up. Apologized afterwards, said I made that up. We got in. We got into New Orleans on a Monday afternoon, I believe it was, and we had no curfew all week. Dick said, "No, no, you guys are on your own." 
So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we pretty much saw the sun come up. And Thursday morning, I get woken up ooh, excuse me, by an irate fan screaming and yelling at me. I'm like, what the hell? And I hang the phone back up. A minute or two later, another call, same thing. My roommate's going, what's going on? I said, I don't know. Somebody's pissed off at me for something. So I go down to the breakfast. And uh, I'm standing on the breakfast line. Here comes the general manager. He comes up and says, hey, uh, you really did it this time. That's all he said. He walked away. I'm like, what the hell? Then Dicka finally walks up to me and he says, did you really say that? I said, look, Mike, I don't know what's going on. I said, I got woke up this morning. I said, Jerry's pissed off at me. What did I say? And he said, well, supposedly you called all the women in New Orleans sluts and the men were stupid. And I said, when did I say this? He goes, didn't you do a radio show this morning at 6 a.m.? I said, no, I got I got home at 5.30. I wasn't getting on the thing at 6. And so he goes, well, that's that's the story. Wow. So this guy just went on the air, said that, had no proof or anything. And I said, you should know better. I'm not getting up at 6 to do a damn radio show. That should have been the first giveaway. Yeah, yeah exactly. What about the rumor you shit yourself in Tahoe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, confirm. That that. That confirm. All right, confirmed All right. on the shit yourself. Okay. Number six, favorite person you've ever played with at Tahoe? Sure, there's a very it's a very long list. Yeah, well, I've been there 31 yeah. years, so uh favorite top guy. couple. Or just the guy you like to get paired with. David Wells mm -hmm. and Bodie Miller. Oh, oh Bodie, Bodie Miller. Miller. Yeah. Interesting. Good dude. Bodie oh. Miller, the US skier. Bodie's the best. Yeah, he's I and those that. two, those two are a lot of fun. Yeah. That's awesome. So we that makes sense. we have a good time together. That but they're sense. they're playing much better than me, so I don't get to play with them is only Bodie only one golfer? day. I played with David Wells. Is Bodie a good golfer? Yeah, Bodie can play. Yeah, there's some days, you know, like everybody, we have our good days and mm -hmm. yeah. mostly bad for me. But uh, I have a few good ones every once in a while. Yeah, that makes sense. I could see y'all getting along. All right, Chicago icon played a lot of golf with a lot of people, but who won more money against each other on the golf course, you or Michael Jordan? Uh, I did. You got the best nice. of them? Yeah. Good. You're one of the Proud few. Of one of the few. Yeah. Well, but I, I think I told the story a couple of weeks ago to somebody. <laughs> we were playing at uh, his place in Chicago. I think it was a Merit Club, they call yeah. it. And uh, we're, uh, we're playing a $100 Nassau. Good bet for me. You know, I had little kids at the time, and I was still playing with Chicago, so I wasn't making a lot of money. And I was, I was playing really well and, and probably had them down two or three bets on the front. And so we – Make the turn. I tee my ball up on 10. I'm getting ready to hit. And he said, all right, I'll play you this side for a million. <laughs> and he was dead serious. And I'm like, dude, I would love to because right now I'm kicking your ass. But something would happen and I would lose this back nine. And my, my kids don't go to college. <laughs> you know, I lose my house. I said, no, I'm not going to bet you a million. You can keep bump, bumping up that hundred if you want. But, yeah. Uh, so I ended up taking a little bit of, of, of his money that day. But he came over to my house and we're playing pool. He got a little bit of the money back. He's a pretty good pool player, too. He's pretty good at I damn mean, everything not from what at? I hear. He just loves to gamble. He'll yeah, just he gamble does. until he starts winning. Double, will, double, double, yeah, double. Yeah, he was hundred percent serious about that million too. He probably would. Oh yeah, yeah that, that's a that's a week. I mean, what is that? That's five yeah. days. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, that ain't fair. That's All right. unbelievable. All right, number eight. We mentioned earlier the hit Charles Martin put on you. One of the cheapest shots we've ever seen in the in the history of football if that happens in today's nfl how many games he suspended and how much does he find because he got two games back then oh well, he did he got suspended two games mm. <laughs> oh he did yeah i don't i think he got fined 10 grand 10 grand in two games but uh hey, i got fined five just for wearing a headband mm -hmm. so that doesn't that doesn't sound right but yeah that sucks that was a rough one yeah Modern so day. what was the question again? Right now, like how much? What does he get? What's his suspension? Oh, what's his fine? What do you think? I would think he would be suspended for the rest of the year. Yeah, and then I don't know about a, a fine. Yeah, a big fine. number. I don't even know. Yeah. something big. Yeah, that was one of the worst ever. All right, I'd bye. never seen that hit by the way, and I YouTubed it earlier. That was unbelievable. Yeah, it's, I felt the same way. I mean, <laughs> you were just standing there, yeah. just walking away, and boom. Well, it's crazy. It's the night before. I was actually with one of their defensive linemen who I had played with in a bowl game back in, when I was a senior in college. Good guy. And uh, we're having a beer, and he says, hey, uh, watch yourself tomorrow. 
He goes, our, really? our coach has been saying, if you get a shot on him, take it. So just, you know. Wow. So I was, I was, I was trying to be aware of everybody in front of me. Yeah. yeah I didn't know I was going to get <laughs> from behind. <laughs> it's the first time that term has been I, used on this show. I like it. Four seconds after you let the ball go, it's hard to still be like on yeah, your toes. I was, I, I think you're because I threw a bad pass. I threw a low, low one into the receiver coming in. I see the, I see the cornerback intercept the ball. So I was, I was like, oh, I kind of just got to let up. Oh, and I was about to just head to the sideline. The next thing I know, I'm, I mean, he, by the time a, he yeah. grabbed me until my head hit the ground, it was like nothing. I was like, Whoa. that's crazy. Yeah, it was like a W. That, that's a major, major suspension in, in nowadays football on a quarterback. That That's game over. Oh, yeah. You can't even hit him legally now. So. <laughs> no, exactly. All right. Last question. You get this question a lot. There's a slight twist to it. We got the 85 Bears versus the 72 Dolphins who wins, but in a bar fight. I know they had some tough guys over there. Manny Fernandez, I remember him, big defensive lineman. I I wouldn't. You had some dudes. Yeah, too. my I never saw my offensive line lose a fight. So, and that's the offensive line. And defensively, you had McMichael, Dent, Wilbur. Yeah, I, I'd line yeah, up. I'd guys. I'd still line up against anybody, yeah. whether we play ball or fight. That's how you pick the best team of all time: bar fight. 15-1, 16-0, who gives a shit? Let's let's figure it out at the bar. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. Well, Jim, this has been an absolute pleasure. Really, thank you for joining us. Today. Hey, my, my so pleasure, generous. guys. It's been great. This is awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. Let me know if you need me back to tell more oh, stories. We need oh, we you back. God, I'll try to get a new story hours. for you for Tyler. What year. are you doing yes. tomorrow? Can you shoot yourself again by tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> well, a few so more much. of these, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. All right, guys. Please, that was a very, very fun interview by an absolute legend, Jim McMahon. Yeah, dude, I really didn't know what to expect going in with Jim. We hadn't really, you know, been around him a whole lot uh, in town, and he opened up, told some incredible stories. I thought it was really interesting because I'd always wondered, like, here's a super outspoken guy, kind of beats to his own drum. Why go to BYU? And he told that story. And then basically after he got done with BYU, uh, when it, once he got done winning football games for BYU, they're like, cool, thanks. Beat it. Scram. Get out of here. So what have you done for me lately type of deal? But yeah. dude, some unreal stories. Crazy, crazy. Even the story about how he hurt his eye with the fork yeah. to the eye. I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? And that's why he has to wear sunglasses pretty much everywhere he goes. Yeah. But he was an absolute fixture up in Lake Tahoe at the celebrity event up there. Played 31 straight years. Never any shoes on. His story about shit in his pants. I yeah, mean, we got to have Pretty one. standard for a guest on our show if you've never shit your pants there's a good chance you're not ever getting invited on subpar it's a prereq and we need one good shit your pants story and then and then you're, you're more than welcome. i mean i was crying i was laughing so hard at that story it's so he's, good he's unbelievable dude but how what, about the belichick that's stuff? what i was gonna say the Were one thing to... that surprised me the dude. most was i've never heard anybody talk about bill belichick that way nobody talks about him like that i don't know if it's because belichick's never done anything to him like they did to jim mcmahon or because they're afraid to talk bad about bill belichick who's like the you know pretty much the guy that they say is the best all-time nfl uh coach and he was not quick to mm -mm. he was not biting his tongue for bill belichick so but uh that was that one i thought was super interesting i had no idea about that story i didn't either and i will have to say that was probably one of the most fun pictures we've taken on golf subpar with the headbands, the sunglasses, that that was awesome. I think he appreciated the homage, the little nod to the gods there that we gave him. You know, he made that cool. He made it what it was, so we had to pay our respects. I love it. Well, everybody enjoy the RBC Heritage, and we'll talk to you on next week's Golf Subpar. Bye.